Eu, eu vou usar uns papéis, que é uma coisa que não é muito costume, mas o tempo é muito curto e eu costumo falar tempo demais e, portanto, vamos ter aqui esta senhora a avisar-me três em três minutos. Se calhar demora mais tempo a arrancar e depois no fim vai ser uma corrida, mas, mas ficam os meus telefones e os meus contactos para quem me quiser falar a seguir. Um, vou por aqui um slide. Vou dizer coisas... Uh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I'll, I'll speak in English if you guys don't mind. Um, so, I'll start with this slide. And it's about how easy it is to become rich. And most people think that uh, being rich is a, a very difficult thing. And it's not. And, and I, I used to, to eat my nails a long, a long, long time ago. Five years ago, six years ago. And I found out that I could control my nail-eating addiction if I wouldn't have loose ends. Now, anyone eats their nails here? I'm sure we have like, yeah, so you, sh you guys should know this. So we can control the addiction if we don't have loose ends. And so I started to visit um, my manicure, a very intelligent woman called Bella. And, um, and because I teach, well, I, I don't teach, I talk to students. I have, I, actually, I have, I have not, not much to teach. But she asked, you know, in, in, in your classroom, do you, do you teach how to become rich? And I said, well, but, you know, Bella becoming rich is the easiest thing in the world. And she said, well, yeah, can you, can you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So step one, you have to work more. So instead of one shift from nine to five, you go back home at five, you, you know, wash, you shower your son, you put him to bed, and you do a second shift between six and 11 in a, whatever, a Moreiras or whatever. So you double the income, you start your savings, you invest in the stock market, and there you go. You're on the way to becoming rich. And she said what most people would say, and it is, well, I don't want to be rich by working very much. Because, you know, isn't there any other way to become rich? I said, well, yeah, actually there is, you know. Well, you can take some risks. You have a mortgage on your house, so why don't you get a second mortgage? You know, a second loan. And with that loan, you can open your own store. And then because you are very competent, and because you're a very good manicure, then you open the second store, the third store, the fourth store, you know, you enlarge the chain, you do an IPO, and you become a millionaire. And she said, are you crazy? I'm not taking any risks. What about my son and my husband? I will not do that. I'm sure that you have another way because you're a very creative teacher. I said, yeah, well, yeah, well, what about going back to school? Already? Jesus. What about going back to school? What about learning a little more about uniology, right? Nailology, about, about the sickness of nails, about new techniques of design. Why don't you go to the L'Oreal School of Nail Design? You know, do some group works, presentations, seminars. I said, what? I'm not going to do that. I don't, I, I'm not going back to school, you know, doing those learning and, and having to present my, my work to teachers. Isn't there any other way? I said, well, well, I, I, well, I, have a, I don't want to offend you, but uh, yeah, there is another way. Uh, you can never offend me. Well, how much do you charge to fix nails to your customers, to your male customers? And she said, well, nine euros. I said, okay. So instead of nine, you'll charge nine plus 50. And you give your male customers a nice oral job, a blow job, in the, in the, in the, in the back of the, hair, of, of, of the saloon. And she said, what? I'm a married woman. I have values. I'll never do that. I'm not going to do blowjobs to my customers just to become rich. And um, that's it. Well, I could leave now. I have nothing else to tell you. That's it. People are not rich because they do not want to become rich. Because they do not want to work more, because they do not want to learn, because they do not want to risk, and because they do not want to commit to their value system. But in any case, many people and many students say, OK, I believe this, but can you give me like a nice practical clue? Can you give me like hints if I really want to become rich? And so all the rest is very obvious, and the, the, the basic message is here. But anyway. so. One of the things you have to do is you, you need to fix a target for your life, to define a target, and most people do not do this. So you need to think a little bit on the things, the places where you want to be in 5, 10, 15 years, the things you want to be doing, 
who you want to be. You want to be a famous rock star. Do you want to be a Nobel Prize? Do you want to be an European Championship? Do you want to be a millionaire? Do you want to be the best student in your university? Um, what, what are the things you want to have? A nice penthouse in, in New York? Do you want to have a, a group of companies? Do you want to you know, live modestly and being a university teacher? And you want to be with whom? With a large family on your own? You like to keep your independence? And you need to fix a plan. If you don't have a plan, you'll always be right. Because it's like a boat with no sails. To whatever port you arrive, because you have no destination, everything will be, yeah, cool, dude, fish meal. And most people do not have plans. And there's one reason for that. We don't want to commit with objectives, with purposes. And if you don't have objectives, you can't fail. And we are all afraid to fail. And when you think on your targets, you have to think on the things that make you happy. Um, and when you think on the things that make you happy, you have to be true about yourself. Belmiro de Zviedo has the same breakfast than you guys. Every day, coffee toasts with Bessel because he has a high cholesterol. And, and at night, he doesn't talk to Davos or to Bilderberg conferences. You know, he watches the SICK uh, soap opera or TVE soap opera, which is even better. And uh, he discusses the problem of the homosexuality of one of the actors. Those are his themes. Why he wanted to become powerful and rich? Because he wanted to be free to say whatever he thinks. That's what makes him happy. And that's the, those are the things that you need to think on when you're planning to be rich. Well, you should try to find the things you like, that inspire you, that build your energy. I love playing chess. I dislike pumpkin soup. Although, even if I dislike pumpkin soup, I like kitchen. So one of the first things I thought was, what about working on kitchen to become rich? Can I become rich by starting working in my kitchen, which is something I really like to do, and I think I do pretty well. Before this, or after this, at the same time, you have to think on, think the future. What is the future about? Look at trend reports. Look at, you know, mass uh, 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 worldwide evolutions, like population is growing old, shortage of water. Cows fart a lot. <laughs> they are responsible for 50% of the CO2 produced in the world. And so we are changing from the farts of the cows, and we're eating more fish. This is one trend I like. And the second trend is the zombie marketing. The zombie marketing is a, a trend to recover old concepts, old products, old brands, and bring them to market. People are beginning to believe or are liking every day more and more products from the old times. You have to get the context right. We are all poor, right? So there's no money. And so if you can fix products that people can produce, can manufacture and buy, and if you go to their houses, they will probably be able to listen to you. People are looking for better options for their food, for the things they eat every day. So this is one trend. But anyway, it could be this one or any other one. It doesn't matter, actually. I like pastéis de bacalhau. Because I like kitchen, because people are changing from meat to fish, and because pastéis de bacalhau, as an origin, it was a food made for poor people. People who could not eat bacalhau had to eat pastéis de bacalhau. But the thing is, I'm from a time, well, most of you aren't, where pastéis de bacalhau, they actually had bacalhau. <laughs> this was a very long time ago. Now they have fish skin, fish spines, uh, uh, you know, all sorts of things, bread, no potato, but there was a time where pastéis de bacalhau actually had bacalhau, and actual potato and everything. Not, you, you can't eat pastéis de bacalhau. One other thing is most people always think and tend to assume that, oh, you know, but we all have pastéis de bacalhau, or croquettes. Well, actually, there's no way we can eat good pastéis de bacalhau. And I'm sure among you guys, there's one who knows Mrs. Elena, who makes this beautiful pastéis de bacalhau, made like the old days. So we need to, write the right, we need to find the right formula. While looking for the right formula, you always have to think, on sexy, you need sexy things. Well, I was trying to build a, a brand name. So I started with cookies, goodies, goodies, and I remember duties, because I like boobies. So it's boobies. <laughs> but anyway, it's just fun. Anyway. And so, but one thing is you need to build emotions. You need to build nice stories. So when you think on prestige de bacalhau, you think that the bacalhau is caught in the sea, bacalhau is a balanced species, bacalhau is, um, is uh, very healthy for your cholesterol, it has lots of potassium, lots, lots of phosphor. So add value, add emotions to the things you're communicating with your audience. So now I have the right formula from Mrs. Elena, which is the best, and I've looked hard for the best formula. I need to sample it. <laughs> I pick up my, I'm, I'm poor. Another strange idea is that people always keep on saying, I cannot become a millionaire because I have no money. Let's take that aside. If you need money, you can call me. I'll give you the money you need. 
you will not call me. <laughs> Never. You're like, I've spoke to more than 100,000 people in the last 15 years. Nobody ever calls me. <laughs> but it's not because you don't believe me. It's because you actually don't want to become rich. Because you, have, you basically have a very good life. But anyway, that's another thing. So you sample it. Because I have no money, I've spent roughly 150 euros in doing 300 pastéis de bacalhau. And I go door to door, in my building, in my street. And I check. Okay, I've, I've sampled it. It's like delivering freely pastéis de bacalhau duties for families to test. And then a lot of things can happen, right? So first, the good thing, or a, good a high impact would be 300 families will call me the next day and saying, what is this? I want more. Please. Can you please send me a dozen of pastéis de bacalhau every week to my house? Now you might think, do you think that if you find the right formula, the brilliant formula of the best pastéis de bacalhau that anyone can manufacture, do you think that will not call you if the price is right? Well, most people will think yes, but they'll do nothing. And that's a very interesting thing. And one fine line that defines entrepreneurs and people who want control of their lives, and the other ones, the complainers that are in the street shouting for a better future, is that they don't test. Again, if any one of you guys sitting in this room wants to test this formula, I'll finance the formula. And I'll only keep 25% of the money you'll be making as millionaires. <laughs> and nothing of what I'm saying was not tested. It was already tested and proved successful. Of course, you might say, well, what about if you don't have a, a, a group of students uh, uh, from Nova tested the formula of low-cost uh, uh, breakfasts? Um, low-cost breakfasts. Uh, one euro, one sandwich, one natural juice. And they had to sell 65 breakfasts in a, in a, in a subway station. They did one, one car, one car. And the car is selling 500 uh, breakfasts a day. They are millionaires. They have guys who want to invest lots and lots of millions and to spread the concept worldwide. They spend nothing, a thousand euros. So it's not about money. It's about can you prove your formula successful with a low cost in your area of community, using your time, the skills and the things you like? Can you add a little bit of emotion and, and sexiness? And it's about testing it. Not 300 families, but only 150 families would call you back. OK, can I improve my formula? Can I have a local, a local astral formula? Can I add the value of salt? Can I use a group of testing in another block of buildings? And that's the way you do it. You keep on permanently improving the, the formula. Another thing is, think on low costs. Think on things that are free, resources that are free. Like when the, 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 the production of percentage de bacalhau of duties grows, and you cannot do them in your house anymore, you don't need to open a restaurant or a factory. Restaurants are normally closed between 3 and 7, or 4 and 7. So use a already settled space with all the gear there to manufacture your prestige bacalhau. You don't need to buy to build new. You don't need millions to, to have an industrial kitchen to build your prestige bacalhau, to manufacture your prestige bacalhau. You can do it on bootstrapping, on low cost, free resources. If you want to launch a school, of teaching whatever, entrepreneurship or organizing at TEDx, you don't need a school. You need to use movie theaters. 50% of movie theaters in Portugal are closed until midday. So that's a free space that you can use. And you can negotiate access conditions and barter conditions with the supplier, with the owner of the movie theaters. Always think on free resources. Research. You need to research. Do a lot of questions to a lot of people. If instead of 300 people of, or 150 people that you would still already be a millionaire, you would have only 30 people calling you, you need to go back to them. Do you like the prestige de bacalhau? Are the duties good? Do they have enough salt? Why won't you buy more? Are they expensive? Do you need different formulas? Are they small? Are they big? You don't like bacalhau anymore. Test. Keep on test. And if you test enough, if you try enough, even a broken clock is right twice a day. You'll eventually get it right. Because if you do things well, whenever you do things well, as the guys from advertising did with H3, after failing their first business, H3 was a, a bad, poor, poorly effective restaurant in, in Tivoli Forum, they did it right. They tested it. They've researched it. They've asked customers, what do you like from this restaurant? They said, the only thing we like is the hamburgers. Change the concept. Three minutes. Okay, good. <laughs> Always improve the product. 
Never be happy with the product you have, as Apple did. Learn sales. You need to learn sales. This guy was is one of the best salesmen in the world. He used to, to sell insurance. And one day, they told him, you know, you're very good because you have a very nice customer portfolio. And he said, shut me in a hotel in New York with a Yellow Pages guide, and I'll show you what's selling. He sold 85 million euros, euros of life insurance policies in one day, closed in a, a hotel room in New York. You need to sell. You need to sell to investors, you need to sell to customers, you need to sell to your associates, and you need to sell to partners. You need to know how to be on the stage. You need to, be on a, you need to know how to dominate a meeting of one-to-one. -one. You need to negotiate your grades with the teacher. You always need to sell. Develop your, uh, your selling skills. Don't do it alone. Being an entrepreneur and having businesses is a very lonely job. If you can be with your friends, with people you like, with people that challenge you, better. That's a pinto coelho. I don't know why the image is there, but I love it. <laughs> being, being a millionaire, being a millionaire is not about having millions. That's not the issue. Because I can give you 10 different ways for you to have millions, right? You can pick up guns and start ripping off jewelry stores. There are lots of things you can do. Being a millionaire is being how far you want to go and what kind of millionaire do you want to be? Do you want to be like Carlos Slim? Do you want to be like that woman who would not change her lifestyle for nothing? What kind? Do you like to be, would you like to be like a guy that I, I remember that was a very high professional in a, a very large corporation and he said, I don't like this? Being a millionaire is about not having millions, but it's about not changing the life you have for any other millions that people could give you. Now, why did I give you these examples? For two reasons, and I'll give you two illustrations of how true my, my story is. First, actually, Dona Rosa was a very poor widow that 10 years ago was living in Penafiel. And the only thing she knew to do was croquet. And she had two little children. And her, her husband was a taxi driver who collapsed, who had his heart collapsed. And she had no idea. And we, another idea that entrepreneurs have to be PhDs and very intelligent. We are all very basic. Entrepreneurs are very basic people with a very strong will of power and with, with the capacity to you know, design targets and fight for them tenaciously. And this woman, her son goes to her and she says, you know, you know how to do croquettes. Start doing croquettes. And that's, this is exactly what she did. She did 12 croquettes and she went to six houses of two croquettes in each house. And then she went to the building. And then she went to the street, and then to the neighborhood. Today she sells 250,000 croquettes a week. She has two children, one guy with 18 and the other one with 19, studying, studying in Yale and Princeton. She's a fucking millionaire. <laughs> so if she can do it, why can't you? Because there's a very fine line that defines the people who feel that they are in control of their lives and people who do not feel they are in control of their lives. And people who want to test, and people who say you prefer to be in a little liberdad crying for someone else's grievances. grievances. And you, you'll fail. You'll need to fail a lot. This is the story of Michael Jordan, who kept on failing, and is probably the best player, basketball player ever. The thing about failure is that it's not about failing, and failing is good, but it's only good if you learn something, and if you diminish the probability of future mistakes. In Portugal, failing is a very bad thing. If you fail, you're doomed. If you're a bad student, if you're divorced, if you're fired, the future is dead for you. It's not like this in, in most countries. One last story. Niall Ferguson was the managing, the, the marketing coordinator of the, the detergents operation of Unilever. And he was responsible for selling detergents and for launching a new formula for detergents. Because Procter & Gamble was launching Ariel Ultra. And he developed, he spent $1 billion in doing research. And he launched Skip Ultra before Ariel. And the formula he launched was so good, so good, so good, that not, not only the stain would go, but also the tissue, the clothes. <laughs> and he, he had to spend an extra $600 million to get the product back and relaunch the formula. Six months after, when, uh, when Anthony Bourbon leaves as CEO of Unilever, he is the guy called to manage the job. Why? Because he had failed. Because he knew how to deal and manage fails, diminish the impact of, 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 of failure, and, and putting himself on his feet to start over again. You'll fail a lot. Never stop learning. Learning is crucial. If you go to the internet and you look for Pastéis de Bacalhau, you'll get 150 ideas of new formulas, new ways of selling it, 
about trends in bacalhau, about trends in pastéis, about trends in fried products. Never stop learning. Try to be a good person and always adapt yourself. You need to permanently adapt yourself to the different circumstances. The world is too fast now. And so if you need to, to send your pastéis de bacalhau to China, you'll need to learn Chinese. And, and, and if you need to dominate social networks, you need to learn a little bit about Facebook and about the new networks and about the new skills of marketing needed to survive in this fast-changing world. And, and because everybody's sh shouting me, if, in, in any case, if... Well, uh, yeah, last story. My, my own story. I was, I was fired uh, 15 years ago by Mr. Balsamão, who was very rightly thought that I was a bad manager, and I'm sure I was. And, um, and I, 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 the only thing I, I like to do is complain. But not, not in the street. I like to complain with retail poor services. Whenever I see someone in a shop that treats me badly, I write letters. I'm the lady of letters. <laughs> but I never give up. I'm like a hound dog. So I write a letter. I write, I write an email. I call the CEO. I call the regulator. I call the prime minister. I call the president of the republic. I get friends to go to the store and shout. I get friends to write reclamations. I never fucking give up. Never. And once I wrote a letter to Sonai saying, you know, the, the, service, the service in sports zone was very poor. And I write a very nice technical letter. And Cristina da Silva calls me. And she said, I really like your letter. You know a lot about retail. I said, do I? And she said, well, do you know anything about mystery shopping? Well, a little boldness. Yes, perfectly. No idea. <laughs> Would you like to work for Sonai? And I said, well, that's a good idea. So I go for this bidding and I win against five or six different multinationals. My, the first year of my, did I need a lot of money? Did I have a lot, of, a lot of money? I had nothing. My first year was driving in this country with my mother, a Fiat Panda, in the desktop on the, on the, back, on the back track of the, of the car, visiting stores. And I had a lot of fun. Today I have the leading mystery shopping company in the country, operating in three countries. Anyway, if nothing else works, you can always give me a call. I'm always there for you. Thank you very much.